Lagos State being the hub of commercial activities in Nigeria is a big city with its peculiar problems. Top on the list of challenges that plague the city daily has to be human and traffic congestions. Traffic in Lagos is a never-ending tale. As one of the most congested cities in the world, most cars in Nigeria are registered in Lagos. Almost every major road in the city experiences traffic of various forms and evidence that road space in the state continues to exceed supply. Joining us via telephone is the former Commissioner for Transport to Lagos State, Ladi Lawasen. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Pleasure to have you on the news. Quickly. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. All right. Some have termed the efforts by the Lagos State Government to solve the traffic congestion um, issue as clutching as straws. What is your perspective of what, where we are and what we can do? No, sir, could you repeat that question? There's an echo. Okay. The Lagos State Government, the effort of the Lagos State Government at tackling the issue of uh, traffic um, has been described as clutching at straws. My question is, what is your perspective of where we are now? Yeah, I take the question from the context of the recent uh, Okada ban. Is that what uh, precipitated that question? Uh, not really, but you can take it from there. That's a good place to start. Oh, well, first of all, uh, I've always held the view that Okada as a mode of mass transportation had no place in the Lagos of our vision. And uh, the behavior of most of the Okada riders in traffic, you know, uh, gives ample evidence to support that position. So in the first place, I think that the ban, uh, not the ban really, sorry, um, the restriction that the, gov the governor enforced recently was a good decision, and there's no one in the transportation space who's seen all the reports and who's observed uh, the Okada riders' behavior in traffic. There's no one who would not support that position. The, the now, argument the of a lot of persons, sorry to interrupt you, is not about the restriction, but the lack of preparedness, and then the question of what becomes of these people who use this as a means of livelihood. Good. So, first of all, um, second of all, sorry, um, the consideration of Okada clearly will have its pros and cons. And the most uh, uh, obvious advantage of using the Okada, uh, from what, where I can see, is the speed with which it could get you to your destination. All right? So, and also, the second part of that will be the fact that Okada could do the last mile, uh, which means the last leg of getting you close to your residence or wherever your destination is. So it's inevitable that if that uh, policy is weighed and considered not to be um, uh, what we need for now, clearly in the immediate term, there will be some inconvenience, you know, in terms of policy, public policy implementation. So it is the it is the extent to which the government can now fill in the gaps that now determines uh, how well it has done in terms of anticipating the fallout of that implementation. So, but I hold a view that um, the mini buses, which are the lower capacity buses, can be used uh, to to plug the gaps that the absence of the Okadas on our road on our roads will leave. So, I, I would expect um, the government at this point to be bringing uh, people to the table and investors and to pull finance together to try and uh, empower those who would uh, deploy these minibuses uh, to uh, pick up the slack from the absence of the Okada on our roads. See, the, the absence of Okada and tricycle um, has not really um, affected the tr uh, traffic situation. A lot of people, including my colleagues, are stuck in traffic as we speak. They've been there for over two hours, and it doesn't seem like it's going to move anywhere further. So beyond the ban on Okadas and Keke, what other way can the traffic situation in this country, in this state rather, be addressed? 
The, the traffic uh, situation we have in Lagos uh, is caused by many factors, some of it poor state of roads. A huge part of that is uh, indiscipline on the part of our drivers on our roads. Uh, some other reasons are because we have too many cars on too few roads. So it's the state government using the agency, agencies under the Ministry of Transportation, specifically uh, LASMA and VIO, should work very hard to make sure that they identify the bottlenecks, uh, where the traffic congestions emanate from, and deploy equipment and personnel in an efficient manner to, to resolve um, such um, gridlock. I expect them to be working on that as we speak. All right, thank you very much for your time with us in the news. Okay, you're welcome. All right, still on this issue, we have in the studio live with us Olamide Udoma Ejo. She is the Executive Director, Lagos Urban Development Initiative. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You've heard the conversation, but I, I want us to look at a, a solution-based uh, conversation now. There is no pleasing Nigerian, um, Lagosians when it comes to the traffic situation. From your perspective, what would be the way to go with addressing, about addressing this situation? So I think Lagos State Government, um, Ministry of Transport, LAMATA, LASMA, they're all working hard and working positively towards a solution. But I think there is a gap between uh, the people and the government and the government officials who are working on this because they haven't really communicated their plan. And I think that's, I mean, I'm going to go a little bit back to the Okada, I'm sorry, but I will, I'll go back to the question Before as well. I that's, that's the problem. They haven't communicated with the people in terms of what the solution is. So if there is a long-term plan, let people know. So at least they know that, okay, in the next three months, we're going to suffer hard. But after those three months, we will be relieved of this suffering. So there should be some kind of conversation between governments. Even if there is a conversation and what you see on the ground doesn't reflect any preparedness, right? Even if you tell me this is what I'm planning to do and you just put me smack in a situation as we have currently with no alternative, how do you manage that? Yes, I mean, even Mr. Lawson that spoke previously, he was mentioning the fact that, oh, they should bring people together now in terms of talking private sector, public sector, people in the industry, and the government come together to have a discussion. Actually, that discussion should have had a long time ago so that they would be prepared for this, this issue or whatever the issues would be, would, the impact would be after the Okada ban. In terms of long-term planning, there are, I mean, the policies are there. There are, you know, master plans. There are transport plans. There are all these plans, but it's about implementation. So how do we move from plan to implementation? How do we bring the private sector in? How do we make these, um, how do we close these bottlenecks of financial, you know, investment? And those are the questions that I think government needs to be answering now. Okay, I mean, the, 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 he said, sorry to interrupt you, he said something about um, Okada's and... Um, uh, tricycles not being part of the ambition of the plan of Lagos. Now, there is a short-term and a long-term plan. I isn't it better to, you know, put measures in place? The long-term plan would be that these people are removed in phases and done in such a way that it does not cause undue hardship. That has not been done. What should be the action going forward now as to address these issues? So I think the action going forward, I mean, yes, exactly. These are the issues and these are, could have been done beforehand, yeah. what you're talking about. So going, but, so going forward now, the, what I think should happen is local governments need to be empowered. They need to understand what their traffic needs are within their local government. They need to start preferring solutions to that. So whether it's we only have 100 Okadas in Ikeja and they can go from here to here, fine. Or we have small minibuses that can go in between certain streets, fine. But the local governments need to champion that with LAMATA because I know LAMATA have a lot of um, data. And so they can work together and try to find those solutions within each local government. Every local government is different. There are local governments where, you know, the most of the population are quite wealthy. They might not need as many uh, short distance trips because they all have cars. Whereas there's some co local governments that have a lot of people who are in need of those short distance trips, who cannot get from their house to the bus stop because it's so far. There are people who, you know, have certain disabilities, old people who cannot move from here to here without those keke marawas, without the uh, Okadas. So, you know, those things need to be brought into account. And these, this data needs to be found so that local government can really be empowered to actually do something within those uh, short distances.
it's your specialty to help solve problems. So solve it now. <laughs> and let, yeah, that's, that's, that's what, because Legosians say they, they are tired of hearing, this is what we plan to do. This is what we are going to do. What are you doing now to address this situation? So me personally, um, the <laughs> government basically, and you're, you're the, the Lagos Urban Development Initiative, aside from the infrastructural part of it, you work in collaboration with other yes. ministries, especially yes. that of transportation. So what is being done to address this situation aside from the few buses that was brought in? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the government is planning right now, but this is my suggestion, and this is what we, I will continue to suggest um, as they as they move forward. Um, they also need to bring in the private sector. So, right, this is what happens, right, in terms of uh, Lagos State or in any city, you have uh, the the government isn't really pro providing a solution, so the informal sector comes in to provide that solution, and then the government is surprised, and then they put policies upon that. Uh, solution. But actually, the government should be working ahead of those policies. And what they should be doing is continuously having a conversation. So now that uh, there aren't bike, motorbikes, bicycle companies are coming in and doing some work. It's the point of the government to now work with them and start seeing how they can provide solutions to you know, moving from A to B. I mean, I know um, an, a small organization who is working with um, a bike company who, who is trying to bring in bikes from malls to homes or malls to the bus stops close to them. So those are the kind of things that government should be involved in as well. They should be involved in that conversation. It shouldn't just be the private sector or NGOs or CSOs working in that space. Um, and of course, we should take the lead on that. But obviously, the government needs to come in as well because it has to be a long-term solution. Thank you so much for coming on the news. Thank you. <laughs>